Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and let's continue with the series on Python. In this video, we will try to connect Python with a database. To be specific, RDBMS. Now it can be anything, it can be Postgres, it can be MySQL, depending upon your choice. In this video, we will try to connect with MySQL. Now, first of all, why do we need an external database? Because till this point, you were happy, right? We were working with variables, uh, we were working with collections, let's say list. Everything works, right? But the thing is, the moment you work with variables, the moment you work with list, all those things are temporary. Example, the moment you run the application, it will be having a lot of data. Example, let's say if you insert some data, all those things will be temporary. What you want, you want to make them permanent. But let's say if you are working with the application, you have entered some data and the moment you close them, you will lose all your data. What if you want to save it for a longer time? Example, let's say if you're playing a game and if you want to save the game, how will you do that? That's why we need external database. It can be a normal file as well, like txt or it can be RDBMS. Now, if you want to work with RDBMS, of course, we need to install them, maybe MySQL or Postgres. So in this video, we'll try to work with MySQL. So let's install that first. So what you will do, you will go to Google and then you will search for a MySQL installer. So you can simply type MySQL installer. Now this installer will install everything for you. If you need a workbench, if you need a connector and if you need a setup as well, it will do everything for you. So just search for that. And when you click on download MySQL installer, you can see we have multiple options here and the 32 bit version itself has two versions in it. So you can simply download that and you can click on this one so install the second one because the first one is for web community we want the entire server software so download this one this is around 313 mb and you can simply download them and you can install it so once you have downloaded the copy it's time to install it so double click on mysql installer so accept the agreement click on next and now which one to install so you can go for server only mode you can go for client only mode if you have another server with you at this point we will go for developer default which will give you enough tool to work with Let's go with that, click on next. And here it will ask you what you want to install. So I guess it needs some requirement. It has two things required, one not installed. So what I will do is I will simply skip it. I don't want anything else here. So you can skip it, it is not required. Click on yes. And you can see it will install all this software the moment you say next, execute. So click on execute, it will install all the softwares. Uh, so it took around two minutes to do that. So let's click on next. And once you have done that, now you can see everything is installed. Now you have to do the configuration. This step is quite important because this is where you will set up your port number, your username and password. So let's click on next. So we do want a standalone machine. So let's do that. Select the first one, click on next. Now here we have to mention the port number. Now by default, the port number for MySQL is 3306. You can change it. You can make it 0708 as you want. Let's keep it by default, the thing which is 06 and click on next. Okay, we'll go for a legacy authentication and click on next. Now this is where you have to insert your username and password. Okay, by default, the username is root. This is where you have insert your password. Uh, so I will time for this example, I will keep my password as one, two, three, four. That's what I'm inserting now, one, two, three, four. Once we have done with that, and we know that this is a weak password, you should always keep a strong password recommended. And you can add extra users as well. So by default, you will get one user, which is root and the password. So you can add more users. Example, I will add username I want is Naveen. And here I want the password to be same as one, two, three, four. So you can create as many users as you want. I will select only one is here. Click on next. You can change the service name. Let me just keep it by default and click on next, nothing specific and execute. Now this should work most of the time. You know, it does give you error. Maybe if you have some software installed already with that port number, then this will not work. Or if you already have a master setup in your machine, then this will not work because the port is already busy there, right? So click on execute. I hope it will work this time in my machine. So you can see it is done. Now click on finish. I guess we are done. Now we have to do one more configuration for router. We don't have to change anything here because we want everything to be default and click on next. Okay, so now this is where you have to connect with your server and let's insert the password, which is one, two, three, four. I hope it will work. Verify. Okay, you can see it says all connections succeeded. That's what we want. Uh, let's also verify the username Naveen. I hope that will also work. Click on check and you can see it works. If you insert a wrong password, it will fail, of course. So you have to make sure that you insert right password. Check once again. Everything is working click on next and execute it will make sure that your mask is ready to work with and click on finish we are done click on next now the moment you say finish now it will open your mask workbench it will also open mysql shell 
Now this workbench basically, so if you want to work with MySQL, you have two choices. You can work with shell where you have to insert all the commands. But if you want something like GUI way where you can right click and you can do stuff, that's why we have MySQL Workbench. Now, the only reason why people don't prefer Workbench is because maybe it will slow down your machine. Maybe they want more geek environment. So you can use shell there. But I'm a big fan of Workbench, so I will use that. The moment I click on finish, you can see we got shell. This is where you can execute all your MySQL stuff. So we want to focus on MySQL Workbench. So I will just make it full screen and you can see on the left hand side we have local instances. So click on that. It will ask you for the password and the password we know is 1234. Click on OK and this will open the world of MySQL Workbench for you. And you can see on the left hand side we have navigator where you can start the instance, you can stop the instance, you can see your performance in the window and then we have schemas. Okay, So by default we do have three to four schemas available here. In fact behind the scene we have more schemas but this is what you can see now. This is where you can type your query. Example if you want to create database, if you want to show databases you can do that here. So I will simply say show databases and if I execute this you can see we have, so these are the database available in your MySQL workbench, in fact your MySQL and if you want to create one database you can do that so let me just do that quickly so let me create a database here so I will say create database that is cool. so you can see it is it has created database so you just have to type the query and click on this cursor button here and then I want to use the database so I will say use the disco that's the database name we have and once you are using that database I hope I have clicked it okay done now once you have done that you can create a table for you so let me get a table so I will say create table student and in this student table I want name of a student so I will say where care and I also want to create uh, from which college you belong. Let me mention college name. Let's keep it at 20 as well. So let's execute this command as well and you can see it works. There's no error till now. So we got database, we got a table as well. Let's insert some data here. So I will say insert into student. Okay the idea is we are not here to learn SQL right. So I'm assuming that you know SQL. So let's uh, insert some data. I will say the data here is we can go with any data. Let me say Naveen and the college name is VSIT. So I have done my post graduation from Vidalanka. So let me just do that. Uh, let's go with one more student here. I will say Priya and Priya is from let's say BVIT. So we got these two colleges right and then we just have to execute them and yes we can insert multiple rows at the same time so you can see we, it is working and to verify of course we know what to do right so we can simply say select star from student. I hope this will work. Yes and you can see we got the output. I know it's very small font. I will just try to edit that in a post production. Let's do that. So this is working. This is how you create a database using MySQL. But we don't want to work with MySQL Workbench right. We are developers. We want to fetch data from a software using Python of course. So of course we need to connect this to a Python code. How will I do that? That we'll see in the next video. So in the next video we'll try to write a code using which you can connect with MySQL. So that's from this video. I hope you are enjoying this series. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for, for the videos. Bye bye.